Aegis is not top 10 is probably a statement you've heard plenty of times. And it often comes from the Aegis players themselves. I think it's a reasonable take, but we never really get to explain ourselves, do we? We often get met with denial from our peers, and people would rather dogpile and harass us than make an effort to actually understand. The vast majority of the time, we get accused for downplaying Aegis or making excuses, when in reality, we just want to share what we know and have a conversation. It's really frustrating to say the least, and it's like talking to a brick wall. MKLeo is probably the closest thing we have to representative when it comes to this topic, and he's been met with the exact same thing. By the way, as funny as this video was, the discussion itself was really bad. <laughs> Leia was met with denial immediately and wasn't able to get his point across whatsoever. That's not a jab at him, just the situation itself. Unfortunately, this is how Edith's meta discussion usually goes. Even now, this video is a great snapshot of what it's like for us. Opinions clash and there's not really any productive leeway in being made on either side. People get way too focused on the not top 10 part and they're not really interested in the why or how. Yes, I am very salty about this and I wanted to get off my chest before we start. <clears throat> so yes, Aegis does in fact have more weaknesses than the recovery, and that's what I want to discuss today. Also, when we say Aegis struggles, we mean against the other top tiers in a top level competitive environment. That's the perspective I'm going to look at it from. First of all, Pyra and Mithra don't really have any good out of shield options to deal with the other top tiers. Yes, Foresight and Futsal out of shield exist, but they're hard to do consistently, and it's very easy to die if you miss, and that happens very frequently at top level. Outside of those two, Mithra's fast out of shield options are up smash at frame 9 and up B at frame 10. Pyra has it even worse with her up B at frame 13. As you can tell, none of these are fast enough when a lot of attacks are minus 6 or lower on shield. Which means that the other top tiers more often than not can just wail on them. Joker has similar issues and also has to rely on Fusu Dodge Shield to keep up. On the topic of shield, did you know that Mitra's attacks are deceptively unsafe on shield? That's right, all of her grounded attacks are minus on shield in double digits. This is a problem because Mitra wants to hit her attacks close for the best possible combo routes. But up close is also where her attacks are the least safe. Her aerials are a bit better, but outside of up air which is minus 5, they don't really hit the right benchmarks. Forward air, back air and down air are all minus 7, which is not only grabbable, but many top tiers have aerials out of shield that are frame 7. Neutral air takes the cake though, sitting at minus 10, which is the perfect number to get punished by anything and everything. It's actually so much worse than people think. What does this all mean? Against most top tiers, Mithra cannot safely land on their shield, and therefore her shield pressure also suffers. It makes matchups like Pikachu and Steve really awful to play, and there's very little margin for error. Mithra then wants to play a slower game where she waits for the opponent to act first, and in some matchups, that just isn't an option. Pyra has to play in a similar way, and while she overall has a better time doing shield pressure, having safer attacks on shield, she sometimes gets overwhelmed before she can even start. Not to mention getting her into position. So they both want the opponent to come to them, but the opponent can just... not approach, and the game plan falls apart very quickly. They don't really have anything to force interactions like a projectile, and Blazing End is too committal to just throw out. If you miss, you lose stage control, and at that point, you should have just not done it. Blazing End is very punishable, and I see people get bopped very frequently at top level. When you combine all of these things with their terrible recovery, suddenly there's a very small margin for error. Getting sent off stage more often than not leads into a 50-50 where you guess right and you live, or you guess wrong and die. So it just ends up having to play extremely safe and perfect because any little mistake can cost you very dearly. You see, they are actually pretty honest compared to majority of the other top tiers and they really do want to play neutral. I emphasize this because you have characters like Steve, Kazuya, Min Min, Snake, Game & Watch, Sonic, Rob, Fox, Pikachu, Heck, even Cloud to some extent that can just skip neutral. Their tools and game plans are just so strong that they brute force themselves into advantage state. Some more than others, of course, but you get the point. Aegis doesn't really have anything that lets them win neutral for free at the top level. They have to wait for the right moment, strike, and then make the most out of their advantage state. And if they make a mistake and their opponent gets a reversal, well, that's it. It is actually has to work a lot harder at higher levels, and I know that's a hard pill to swallow for some people, but it is the truth. On top of all this, everyone and their grandmother just knows the counterplay to Aegis at this point. They've been such a popular pick since they came out, that everyone is familiar with the matchup. 
which just adds another layer to the top 15 cake that I'm gonna eat because no one else seems to want any. I want this video to spark discussion in the community and I hope that I managed to at least give a voice to the Edismains who were never heard. Thanks for watching, if you made it this far, and let me know what you think of Aegis.